All right, how's everyone doing? I am Rich Tolenza. Thanks for checking out the Rich Tolenza Show. So what I'm going to call this podcast is Avoiding Your Passion. And if you know anything about me or my podcast or my YouTube channels, I truly want people to go after what they want to go after and succeed, or at least take the road to trying that. Experimenting, uh, just going after what they want to go after. And a lot of times, I'm going to be honest, you most likely aren't going to succeed necessarily. Uh, or you may not end up where you think you're going to end up. You may actually end up in a better place. But it's it's the journey along the way I always talk about. Because a lot of times what we think we want to, when we get closer to it, I guess you could say, it may not be what you thought and it may not be what you really wanted it to be. And I, I get it. I think a lot of people have gone through this throughout their life. But I do see a lot of people who are talking about all the different things they want to do or all the you know, the, their desire, their passion, what they've always wanted to do, what they believe they should do, but they never go after it. They don't even start. They avoid it. Or they're always talking about it, but never putting anything into action. I was one of those people when I, was a, when I wanted to make films. I was a guy who was always watching movies, going to the movie theater, kind of dabbling in writing things down. But see, I didn't like writing, I realized, on paper. But I loved computers, so I liked typing. I didn't like a typewriter, but I liked, when computers kind of came into play, and I was fortunate because my ex-wife was uh, involved with computers. She even went to school. So I had laptops before anybody, or she did. And she showed me how to use them. And so I liked that. And it wasn't that I was using the computer. This is I'm talking late 80s type stuff, early 90s, like for a lot of things. Because a lot of the beginning of the computers was kind of bullshitty. It was like for accounting Things in that nature, not internet driven, but I can write screenplays or I can write ideas. So that's what I would do and I like that part of it. But I was a guy who was just mainly always talking about making movies that never did any, never surrounded myself with anybody in the industry, never learned anything about the industry, never read about anything in the industry, never even read really a screenplay with the exception of when I was doing modeling and we had some stuff for auditions for commercials. And my family is involved in the film and television industry. Uh, actually. And I would kind of, I knew that they were involved in it, my aunt and some other family members. And I was almost scared to go down there because I was, I I don't know, again, avoiding my passion. Then finally, I had a close friend of mine call me out on my bullshit. He's like, dude, all you do is talk about making movies. Why don't you make one? And, you know, it kind of hit me in the face. It says, yeah, why don't I make one? Because I was always constantly critiquing them and saying they were full of shit and Truthfully, I had no knowledge of how much hard work it was going to take. But again, I was always avoiding it. You may be one of these people. I'm working on a cookbook with my mother. And she's an incredible cook and baker. And everyone knows this about her. I, I'm, I just worked on the summary for the book. And I mean, she can, she, and we, I put up a funny video of her and I, I can't say me as much as her, with all her recipes spread out all over the table because I've been visiting her more and it was really funny and I said hey creating this cookbook with my mother it would be my third book actually but for the most part this would be her book I'm just going to write the intro and the summary and then she's I'm getting the recipes and then I'm going to clean it up and then have my editor work with me on it and knock it out of the park because if you know anything about my mother she really is famous in her own damn right when it comes to food. I mean, she'd have St. Joseph tables where there were people, I talk about it in the book, that are wrapped around a gymnasium. That's how many people would come. I wouldn't be surprised if there were thousands of people. (laughs) I just used to see hundreds of people coming. People would be fighting for her leftovers. Um, So, you know, she is somebody who's been very passionate about cooking. But I think her true passion was dancing. She never became a dancer. Not sure why. Just think at a young age, she just wasn't surrounded by anybody who can help guide her. And she's a really good dancer. But let's throw it back into the cookbook or whatever. We've been working on this for 10 years. And it's just kind of funny because, you know, when I'm looking, of, I was, I, I wrote a book and then I said my next book's going to be a cookbook with my mother. Uh, and I started doing it with her and it was something, it was a passion project of mine with her. And we talked about it. We didn't do it. I ended up writing another book. Then I'm talking about it. Then I'm, I created a program. Then I'm doing all these things. And every time I'm with her, I'm thinking she's cooking all this delicious food. She has not only in her mind, but other recipes. And, 
it was kind of a passion project I was even avoiding. I'm like, why am I avoiding this? I can kick this in the ass with her. I'm the one who basically knows how to do this with her. I need her recipes, obviously. Uh, I need her... Uh, I don't need her guidance on creating the book at this point in time or where I'm going to market it and how I'm going to, you know, you know, really uh, do a lot of things regarding the book. All I needed (laughs) really was the recipes, but I kept letting it slide. And then I'm looking at this going, you know, I kept thinking it was my mother's passion project too, but the reality was, I don't think it is. It's more mine because I want to share my mother's legacy and I want to share my other family members' legacy and friends, uh, in-laws that my mother grew up with. It goes for my immigrant grandparents, uh, all different types of family members from Italy and Chicago. And I just wanted to create a book for kind of a, it's not only just a cookbook to help people really cook incredible Italian American style food, because that's what I kind of call it, because it's my mother's not from Italy. I mean, she's been there and she cooks Italian food, but a lot of it has been Americanized. Uh, but it's just kind of like a family thing for all of us to have. And it's it's her legacy to a certain degree. I just, she's older, she's 70 now. I want to have it for myself, maybe for my kids. Who knows if you have grandkids. And I just said, you know, just something for her to have. But if you're somebody too out there that has, you know, you have a passion for to do something, do it. Even if it's, I don't care if it's a podcast, very quickly, you want to test it, test it. If you want to do a YouTube channel, try it. Don't get caught up thinking you got to have thousands of members or you got to monetize it immediately or think that you got to put up hundreds of videos a year. You do whatever the hell you want to do. If you want to write a book, you know, really, if that's really, I run into so many people who say, Rich, I want to write a book. Even though people read less more now than ever, I don't know if a book's the answer. But if you want to look like a professional and all that bullshit, start writing something down. I'm not even seeing it, you know, or even speaking into a microphone at first. Maybe just do that, you know, and then taking that and having somebody download it if you don't want into your computer and then you have it just start doing it a little bit don't avoid it so many people avoid it and nothing I think is going to be worse and I call it when they throw the dirt on your face when you're dead and you're you're just older in general and when you had the energy maybe the knowledge the wit the the you know the endurance to do what you wanted to do and then you lose that it's heartbreaking like to a certain degree with my mother with dancing, it kind of breaks my heart. She never danced. But I don't think my mother also realizes all the opportunities and incredible incredible family and life that she led in Chicago. She's It's been very amazing. She's the oldest out of probably 150 grandchildren. And she's just lived and been surrounded by so many incredible people uh, from all different places. And she's just so well-loved. So... I just want to do a, uh, I know my mother listens to these podcasts, so she's going to like this one maybe. Maybe not. Maybe I outed her. (laughs) I know you're listening, Ma, and you're probably cooking something. I'm not kidding. She, I walked in the other day because I was visiting Chicago and I walked in and she was cooking me dinner. I don't, I don't know if it was a steak, pepper and eggs or some type of Italian dish. And I walked in and I heard someone talking uh, and she was blasting my podcast out of her phone. And I sound a lot like my father. And I walked in and I hear her, like I thought she was either had, I thought she had my father on speaker. <laughs> That's what I heard. I'm like, I stopped, I walked in and I'm hearing somebody talk from the back. I'm like, oh my God, she might be talking to my father. Let me kind of go in the bathroom and wash my hands and stuff because I knew we were going to eat. And I come out, it was my podcast. I'm like, stop listening to my podcast. She was laughing. But yeah, she was cooking. And that's when I shot the video of... Uh, all her recipes all over the table. There had to be, I don't even know how many. It was crazy. But yeah, um, that's really all I got for you today. If you get a chance, uh, just check out my website, richcholenza.com. The book's going to be called Shut Up and Eat. I should just do a separate podcast you know, eventually on that. Uh, start to eat and munch, basically. Uh, that's what I remember my mom, you know, or people saying when I was growing up is shut up and eat. <laughs> Because everybody, a lot of times around the table or groups of people, they're all talking. And then we just, it was time to eat, I guess you could say. So I, that's what I'm going to name the book, at least for now. Uh, I'm not here to pitch the book, just so you know. I was just, I really want you to go after what the hell you want to go after, passion-wise. All right? If you have any questions or comments, hit me up. And listen, don't worry about failing. Everybody fails, fail forward. You may succeed. Even if you don't, I can assure you, you're going to love the journey along the way. You're going to learn so many things about yourself and others, maybe even have the opportunity to meet all different types of people that you may have never met before going after your passion. I will wrap it up with this, with a lot of actors, 
in Chicago that I was able to kind of go see. I don't care if it was Second City, Improv Olympic, just hiring actors. Uh, a lot of people, if you're older, and I know a lot of them out there, maybe not now as much as before, but they want to be actors. They want to be musicians. Uh, they want to sing. They want to do these things. Go try it out. Go do it. You have nothing usually to lose. People may laugh at you, but I'm going to tell you right now, you just going and doing it can just be the biggest relief of your life. That doesn't mean all of a sudden you have to move to Hollywood. That doesn't mean you're even going to be in movies or be on stage or on Broadway. Just being around people that love what you love to do and just enjoying it for what it is, is amazing. I'm telling you, go try it out. That goes for anything. Take care.